Good morning, wherever you are in the world. This is Graham Moore and the Leadership Challenge Middle East YouTube channel. And I'm with my very good friends, Mohammed Shogri. Good morning, Mohammed. Good morning, Graham. And he's in Bahrain, as he always is. And Phoebe Francis, who's in Dubai. Good morning, Phoebe. How are you doing? M morning, Graham. Morning, <laughs> Mohammed. Nice to be here. Good. Now, I wanted to talk today about leadership and vulnerability. Or we could put that another way and say vulnerability and leaders. So what's your reaction to those words together, vulnerability and leaders? Surely that's a problem. Let's look, let's look at what your initial thoughts are. Mohammed. Well, uh, that immediately takes me to a moment where I had to demonstrate leadership in one of the courses, and it was a simulation only. And I had to show that I'm robust, so confident, just to pass this feeling to my team members, where the uh, master trainer said, uh-uh, you're doing it wrong. Leaders are humans. You're sending the wrong message. And then I learned, it's, it's been 20 years now, and I learned since then that I'm a human, they are humans, and we need to share not only our strengths, but also our weaknesses. And this is the way how we go forward. So, Muhammad is saying that it is okay for leaders to be vulnerable. No, I'm not so sure. Phoebe, what's your take on this? Yeah, I, I remember a story, which is my experience with one organizational leader whom, with whom I work. work and he often, uh, in his conversation, uh, update us, Phoebe, I don't know about this. Can you tell me more about that? And what I have experienced when, when uh, the, uh, the leader in the organization as a departmental head informing us, uh, Phoebe, I don't know. Actually, we become more vocal on what we know and it builds on uh, trust and credibility with the other person with whom we are having that conversation. And it makes it very cordial in that process. You know, someone is willing to be saying that I don't know. And that makes it extremely powerful in that conversation. And our ability to relate and speak to him openly become much more uh, strengthened in that process. So I, I, I consider it as a, 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 a very unique skill to say that I don't know and being vulnerable in that situation. Yeah, but but hang on. Yeah, come on. Surely, surely, as the leader, as the manager, you've got to know everything. You've got to be in charge. You've got to be not showing any weakness because vulnerability, this is where you, you, you feel anyway of certain maybe threat or weakness or not up to the task or not able to do it. You're unsure of things. You might feel that. Uh, and but shouldn't a manager hold that in? Shouldn't a leader hold that in and say, come on, I'm strong. You should be strong too. So why? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, come back on that, you know, Graham, as you mentioned, because, um, you, you know, what, 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 what are our assumptions about leader at this point of time? And when we say that leader should not be vulnerable, what, what, what assumptions do we hold in that process? What, 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 what way it is uh, actually working. Maybe our um, visual experiences in movies and other aspects may be coming in there where we see powerful leaders who are not vulnerable. Mm -hmm. just, just a comment at this point. Yeah. So, Mohammed, how do you react to that? Well, uh, you made me even more, more vulnerable now. <laughs> now. I'm thinking now, yeah, he's right. I mean, the followers at the end of the day, they are following the leader because they want more power, power, confidence to move forward. And if he's showing as vulnerable as them all the time, so how will this go? You know, how will they go about this? So I'm uh, putting back the question, actually. So I'm going to pick up on the comment that was made by the person who referred it to you at the start of your 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 response today when you talked about us being human. We are human. As leaders, we are human. And our humanness should be a part of who we are. And humans make mistakes. Humans are not supernatural. Humans can feel vulnerable and feel weakness. So if I admit to my team that I'm feeling a little unsure, I'm feeling a little uncertain, I'm feeling a little bit vulnerable, 
what might my team do? Think positively. What might they do? Well, is there a chance that they might say, how can we help? If we, if I'm feeling vulnerable because of a particular issue or what's what we're confronting, and if we talk about it amongst the team and I get their input, is my vulnerability likely to be reduced because I'm feeling their confidence, listening to their ideas? Is that likely to happen? Uh, I think in my past experiences, I saw team uh, members when they see some sort of um, the need in the leader for help or the need for, or when he says, uh, I run, I'm running out of ideas, what do you think? I, uh, in that regard, they feel more confident and encouraged to help out and give their ideas versus when the leader has all, always has the answers, always has the last saying, so they, they just listen and do nothing. And, and I think in that regard, uh, the team coming in the picture and uh, offering help, that is really powerful. That is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if I, I'll come to you in a moment, Phoebe, but if I admit my vulnerability, what else am I um, admitting to or exposing myself to? What else am I letting out what are people are seeing about me when i admit my vulnerability rather than saying i am invincible what, what are they seeing yeah uh, yeah graham what i feel at this point when you highlight that is you know the honesty as has a value which is coming up and yeah. i think um, when we see the leadership challenge of how how to model model the way in the process you know I, I'm, I'm being honest and that is a role modeling at that stage which actually uh, help the people to respect that person with, uh, with whom they are interacting on a daily basis and uh, and 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 effect of that is going to be uh, as as we had mentioned honest conversation where people themselves will say i don't know how can and and it, when that happens mutually other members will be coming out. I think I know this and uh, maybe giving their inputs. So it actually leads to new uh, processes and practices in organization, new ideation, which uh, where, where everyone may come in for forward to ha help the team at, at that point, because they see that my opinions get valued in that process. So I'm going to just stick with one comment that, that you made at the start of this. And you said that when I admit to my vulnerability, one of the things that people see is honesty, right? That I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. So the characteristics of admired leaders, which have been researched for over 40 years in the Leadership Challenge, the top, the number one in 40 years has not changed the characteristics of admired leaders people want this in their leader and what do they want number one every time in 40 honesty. years what they want honesty honesty that's yeah. the number one and so what you're saying here is if i'm admitting to my vulnerability it is demonstrating another aspect of my honesty but it's also doing one other thing i'm sure you i hope you'll agree is it not allowing people to see a little bit more of my authenticity, that, that, that this leader is authentic because he's not putting any bluster, any, any false cover-up, he's not lying to us, he's admitting and admitting his vulnerability and therefore his authenticity is strengthened because he's, he's human, as you said at the start, Mohammed, he's human and people really want to work with leaders who are authentic. Yeah, I truly agree. And uh, this is the part where it makes the humans interact in the uh, most honest, let me say again, way. But something comes to my mind also. A part of me is saying, okay, maybe, uh, especially if you're a leader of a huge group or at a critical position, what if, just comes to my mind, what if vulnerability, authenticity are uh, confused with 
uh, niceness. All right, okay, he is a human, and they some of some some uh, constituents might take advantage of. Okay, he's he's nice and he's a human, and he won't mind if I do this or this. It may open some holes for some people to take advantage of that because they saw this vulnerability equals niceness as well. So I am a bit perplexed about that, Graham. Yeah, look, that's an interesting perspective on this. And I also know that people sometimes feel that if they know me as a leader a little bit more than perhaps normally they would know someone uh, in this working situation, that you'll take advantage of me. You'll treat me as, oh, but Graham, you, you know, we're friends. You can let me do this. You can let me get away with this. Graham, come on. No, as a leader, you're going to be able to manage this really, really well because of the relationship that you as a leader have with the people that you're working with. And, of course, that honesty that, that Phoebe introduced in this conversation so appropriately builds respect. People be, respect the leader even more because he's not lying to them. He's building his credibility by being honest and he is building trust, as Phoebe said, and people see this vulnerability and this authenticness that's that's coming through. You know, some a woman I know in the United States who's doing some amazing work and has um, now set up, uh, she's a, an executive coach, and she wrote a blog article a few months ago, which she called Vulnerability, the New Leadership Superpower. And what she talked about in this blog was the power of being vulnerable with the people that you are working with. And that authenticity is important. So what, what do you think about authenticity, guys? What does that mean to you if, you, if you're working with a leader who you can say is, yep, he's authentic? Yeah, what, what comes to my mind is, you know, uh, when we are uh, vulnerable, it actually uh, creates an emotional connect with the other person. That is how I see that, you know, well, like, like uh, for example, uh, I, I made a mistake and uh, I'm uh, showing that I am weak at that point of time. And, you know, even when we say that, it 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 brings that, uh, as, as, as you highlighted, Graham, that honesty in front. And again, it is an opportunity for reflection with both, what, what can we do differently rather than we, we coming into a critical mode. What, what can we do? What can we do differently? What, what solutions are uh, we exploring? But if we are not coming with that authenticity, that opportunity for that uh, conversation is lost. So I, uh, that is how I see that. It is an opportunity where we bring our new ideas and strength to the fore when we express our authenticity and that emotional connect with the other person. Yeah, Mohammed, what do you feel? Uh, when you said the, about the power of vulnerability, I was really intrigued. It was some sort of a relief. And uh, yes, being authentic doesn't mean uh, being. Uh, you can use my friendliness, etc. In fact, uh, I am very much uh, into that where uh, if we know, as you said, the leader very well, we will know. Perhaps one slogan I saw yesterday, coincidentally, uh, which says, be hard on issues, soft on people. Wow. I'm like, wow. Yeah. That's a powerful and vulnerable uh, leader. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Be, 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 you know, if you're going to be hard on people, leaders don't, leaders don't do that and get great results, right? It's like the whipping, the, the 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 punitive response if you don't do the right thing, the punishment. No, 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 no. Be kind on people. This is about the relationships that we have with the people that we are leading. And what happens is that people love working with that leader. If that leader can admit things that are not right, um, it, then they go, oh, because they're admitting that, you know, I'm as I said earlier, I'm not the superpower. And and I w when they say that, they're also saying, I need your help. We need to work together. If I'm admitting, admitting my vulnerability, I'm, I'm admitting a, a weakness, if you like, but it doesn't mean that that weakness is going to have us all falling off the mountain as soon as we get near the top. It, it means that I'm saying I have this weakness or vulnerability, and others might say, 
you know, I can help because I think I'm stronger in that area. So I can step up and, and support. Whereas if someone doesn't admit their vulnerability and doesn't talk about it and isn't authentic, there's a chance that some people might even mentally just think, well, he knows what he's doing. Why should I help? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I can say that every time I remember uh, exposing my weakness or vulnerability in an aspect, I gained more respect. I remember uh, going to a department in uh, my previous company and I asked a secretary for her help through an online program, which I didn't master like my colleagues. So I said, hush, hush. I have uh, an issue with this uh, uh, program. Uh, can you teach me how to do it? She said, teach you? Why should I teach you? <laughs> because I cannot do it like my friend. She said, you're not supposed to do this. You have bigger jobs to do. You have to go out and make change in the company. <laughs> this is a clerky job. I will do it for you, sir. You just go. I'm like, oh my God. Wow. I just exposed myself and she is looking at me in a different way. So uh, people are ready to help respect and they will be uh, on, honored. Some of them are honored. Yeah, I will do it for you. I know the system, sir. You can go. And, you know, Mohammed, what you said is absolutely spot on. When you, it's people are almost waiting to help you. When you admit this sort of thing, they, they no one, someone says, okay, your problem, goodbye. If they're working with, as this woman said, no, you've got more important things to do. I will do that for you. You don't need to worry about that. Well done. So, yeah, I, yeah, I think what, what, in, that, in that uh, conversational space, what, what we have seen is vulnerability. Uh, it is not also sharing our struggles at that point. It is also uh, highlighting the values and beliefs, which uh, I think we stand for in that process, which, which makes that, uh, again, I will say emotional connect with the other person. Yeah. Uh, in a public and private space and and usually what happens i think is people find it difficult to do in uh, to be vulnerable in front of others uh, and one suggestion which i will say is do the difficult thing be vulnerable even when others are hesitant so so you build that honest uh, value in front of your people and the group with which you are working can I build a, a slightly different parallel and ask you to think about this? Because I know both of you, as indeed me, we are fathers. So as a, as a parent, think of this. Is, have there been times when, as a parent, that you have said or done something in relation to your child that indicates you don't have superpowers, that you are a little bit less than 10 out of 10? Have you ever done anything like that? Well, um, it's difficult, but I do it uh, frequently and I'm beginning to uh, reap some of the fruits without letting my children uh, take advantage of that. Dad, Dad, can you give me, uh, I want to buy this online, I want to buy this online. Okay, that part, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit less vulnerable, all right? But jokes aside, um, recently I have... Uh, uh, shown my kids that I am not as tech savvy as you are with these devices. Can you can you show me this? How can I uh, browse this? How can I use this? Can you show me how to set up this program? And they are sure that it's easy. You what? don't have to worry. Give it to me. Give it to me, Dad. Uh, it's like sure. the other woman. You know? Sure, Dad. You just said sure. I'll do it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're not saying, oh, Dad, you're a failure." No, no, no. Maybe, maybe inside of them, maybe, but I don't care. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sure. I am absolutely sure that is something like this has another effect, and, and it's the same with leaders in other aspects. Leaders, parents, it's the same. Well, parents are leading. Simple. We know that. Phoebe, what's your reaction? You, I know you have a son uh, who was uh, getting to his last year in high school. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. in grade. That is he. So, yeah, it is. If you don't, yeah, get... sometimes we. I have to say, I don't know. Can you help? You know, and it it actually builds that uh, opportunity for further connection and showing that you you are also someone who have areas where you don't know. 
yeah. and you know that that actually build the connection process where yeah. um, uh, uh, the conversation becomes smoother easier and, and uh, we, we have the listening ears both sides and, and uh, it, it makes that uh, opportunity uh, to make that bond stronger and as as you mentioned it makes me uh, superpower with that uh, ability to say i don't know but it, it builds the relationship even as a father to his children in the recent past the very recent past two of my children have each made in separate situations have made suggestions to me dad how about you try this or did you know that this can be done I'm going, wow, this is pretty cool. I need this. This is good. They're not at all saying, you should know this. You're the father. You should know this. And my children are very much adult children. Uh, but even when children are younger, younger, th they want, actually, I think many, in many cases, they want to impress their father by providing a solution to their fa for their father that the father doesn't, doesn't know. Is that is that a fair comment, Mohammed? Yeah, absolutely. And when, when you were saying that, also, uh, I remember that in the process of them coming into the picture and helping you with your vulnerability, what happens to them inside? They, something in them is growing. Yes. Confidence. I can do this. Oh, dad sees this as a strength in me. I didn't know I am good at this. So I will do more of this. And now my little daughter sometimes says, dad, don't you want me to uh, make a video for your Instagram? <laughs> I said, you can't do this. Yeah, dad, I can. <laughs> so at the end of the day, parents, you said, are leaders. You see your uh, your children growing because of that. And the same exact yeah. thing applies. Mohammed, uh, sorry, Phoebe. Yeah, I was saying that, you know, it, it actually creates a psychological safe environment between uh, the family members where... Each of us at various points of t time may have to say that areas which I don't know. And that actually uh, ma makes that, you know, engagement better. Hang on, hang workplace on. Or at, uh, home Let life. me just say, so you're saying, you just said, I think that this creates a safe zone between parent and child, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this also <laughs> creates a better bond between, is that right? Yes. Very true. So Absolutely. the same exact thing applies to leaders everywhere, right? Exactly of course, yeah. The, same. The, pe Damn. the people that you are leading when you admit to that vulnerability are going to do the same sort of things that you've just articulated that your children do. So that, Muhammad, let me just come back to your daughter saying, Dad, would you like me to help you with the video? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the same sort of things is going, are going to happen in the working environment or in the environment where I'm leading a, a team of 27 people as we go and climb Mount Everest. You know, the same sort of thing is going to apply. Am I talking rocket science? No. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, except that sometimes my daughter says, okay, I'll do it for you, but how much? <laughs> <laughs> And part of me says, oh, no, oh, my God, now she is talking as a businesswoman. I like that. Uh, Whatever. I'll do it half of the payment you charge other videographers. Oh, So you, you don't know how they grow after that. You, you only ask them for a favor, and then they are growing. They, uh, they learn. They are in school, but they are talking business to you. I mean, that's what you said, uh, Graham. They grow in, uh, you know, unimaginable ways by just giving them the space to come to your vulnerability and then they grow and that we are doing this without doing anything actually absolutely look and not necessarily in the workplace or in another leadership situation is the person going to say well i'll do this if you give me an extra salary advantage or if you do this or that no no no, no. If, if certainly if the relationship with the leader is there they are going to do this and want to help you so do we agree that with uh, my friend Elise Sinha's uh, title to her blog that vulnerability is the new leadership superpower? Superpower, yeah. And I think that if people are watching this now, take on board the fact that vulnerability is not a negative. It's a very much yeah. a for leaders. 
that leaders don't like. Some people, managers prefer not to admit their vulnerability because they feel threatened. They feel insecure. If I admit my vulnerability, you could take my job. If I admit my vulnerability, I could be out of a job. So, gentlemen, this has, as usual, been a lively conversation. I always enjoy talking to you about learning about the other elements of leadership that we focus on. I wish you all a very good week ahead. And uh, thank you, both of you, for your contributions today. Thank you all and see you in our next next video. Absolutely. Thank yeah. You. Th th thank you, Graham. Thank you, Mohammed. And again, uh, as as uh, as a closing, ask for help. Be vulnerable. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you.